Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a metalworking video. We are going to be covering dent removal with hammer and dollies. Stay tuned. Have you ever been frustrated with a dent or second guessed your hammer and dolly technique? Maybe you never tried because it didn't know where to start. Today we're going to be doing how to's on how we get it done at Sylvester's Customs. When you are metal working a dent, it is crucial to understand and assess what has happened to the panel. Metal finishing is a lost art. If you are asking yourself what is metal finishing, well metal finishing is getting a sheet metal repair to a mirror finish with no distortion and no oil canning. Anytime you are performing any type of sheet metal fabrication and or dent removal, you must understand how metal moves and when it is damaged, manipulated, or welded. Back when I was researching and trying to improve my skills and master the art of metal finishing, I found a guy by the name of Ken Sakamoto. He had an Instagram page, which you can find in the description of this video, that blew my mind. There was two posts that stood out. The first showed a 1940 Ford hood in what looked like a bag of walnuts. It was severely damaged. The next post looked as if it was a brand new hood that had been chromed. It was beyond impressive, and at that point, I knew I had to do whatever it took to learn from him. After reaching out to Ken and attending his four-day hands-on class, it gave me a level of confidence like no other. Although we are touching on these techniques in this video, if you truly want to master this, I highly recommend reaching out to him and taking a class. We have also included his phone number in the description of this video. Shrink versus stretch. Before we dive into the panel and actually show you hands-on how we do it, I need you guys to understand the metallurgy of how metal reacts, how it moves versus shrinking and stretching it. And we're gonna be talking specifically about cold shrinking, not heat shrinking. That's actually gonna be on the next video we do. So let's talk about the hammers and dollies that we use. And I'm gonna be completely transparent with you guys. This was the only dolly that I had when I started and one hammer. And the hammer that I used to use was completely flat with a nice sharp edge around it. Well, what happened every time I'm trying to take a dent out, I would go at it like, you know, putting this thing on the low and trying to push up and smack around the high. That's what most people do. And although that gets you semi-close, a lot of guys end up with oil canning. That's why we're making this video. And that's why it's gonna be so crucial to you guys to follow this to the end. When you're getting dolly sets, uh, the one that we really liked that Ken actually recommended was Martin Brothers. And we bought like $700 worth of Martin Brothers equipment that we have links in this video for. So check it out. But what we want to talk about is in Ken's class, we go through and we use blue dicum. Dicum is a blue layout fluid that you use for whether it be machining or body work and trying to find the highs and lows just like you would with guide coat. So in this dolly, we actually took a sander by hand and we worked this and it shows the little imperfections even in a Martin Brothers, a quality dolly and hammer. You wanna make sure that anytime you're removing a dent, you know what the, the surface of the panel's curvature is. This is a radius gauge that has all the different uh, shapes and radius profiles to it. You want to match the dolly with the curvature of the panel. So you can see here, you can come in and really dial in. So that's about a six on the radius curve. You want it to be as close to it as you can. And if we're talking about metal finishing, we're trying to make it as perfect as possible. You need to make sure that this curvature matches what you're trying to work as close as you can. So when you're working shrink versus stretch, we are gonna show what a dent in a panel would look like. Cold shrinking is where you're using a flat section of the dolly underneath your panel. Okay, we're gonna pretend that's our sheet metal, our dent outward. And you're gonna be using the hammer to strike this right in the center and shrink that metal down into itself. There is a difference between metal that is stretched. If it's been hit really hard in the area that is dented, let's just say it got, let's just say you took this hammer, which has a very high crown, and you smacked that piece of sheet metal with everything you had, and you actually stretched it. 
versus something that maybe just got bumped in and you could just bump it out with the dolly. So that is the biggest takeaway is you have to really sit down and look at the panel and understand what needs to happen. Think about what happened to the panel to get you where you are before you even repair it. You can get metal right back to the exact same shape that it started with, but you have to be precision with it. If you go about it with a, a hammer that is not corrected, and by corrected, we actually, in Ken's class, you take these hammers and you take a belt sander and you work these things to where they have a very slight crown. You don't, you don't wanna have a dent that you're trying to take out and you can see all the round circular marks in your panel. And you also don't wanna be using a hammer with a super high crown unless you are really trying to push something out. So the more that you can understand what needs to happen with the sheet metal, the better off you'll be. If you were to take a piece of, whether it be a tablecloth, sheet, or picture this as water. If you're to take a hammer, let's use a standard round hammer as an example, and if you were to strike the metal, what does it do? It stretches and it displaces. So if you have an area that you struck the sheet metal and it was a round hammer, it displaces metal stretching in all directions, okay? And if you have a hammer that is like this one, which is a linear stretching hammer, and you were to strike it here, that's what the strike hammer, it's a rectangular shape, it's going to displace the metal in either direction. That's why it is linearly stretching the metal. So understanding what you're doing with that, you wouldn't want to take out a, a crowned dent with a linear hammer because you're going to end up pushing that metal in all different directions. You need to be very precise with it. And that's why we go through creating, if you have a big arch that is dented versus a really tight, stretched, maybe even a folded over piece of sheet metal, you have to smash it back down into itself, cold shrink it. Cold shrinking this is where you don't use any heat at all. So if you are Trying to take out, say, this dent, the harder that you hit the sheet metal, the more displacement you have, the more that the metal moves. So if you go at it and you're just wailing at the sheet metal, trying to smash this down, you're actually, not only are you going to get the shrink where it's coming down, but as soon as that metal touches the dolly and it's flat, you are now stretching the metal. And that is where you have oil canning. And then things take off and you're constantly battling, trying to figure out how you're going to fix that. Constantly guys take sheet metal and they beat them in so that way it doesn't oil can and it's bound up so they can fill it with mud. We're trying to eliminate that issue. The problem that people have is that they put excessive filler on panels and excessive filler buildup is what typically cracks and fails. And that's why this is so important and it goes so in hand in hand with doing all of your body work. Now that we have discussed how metal moves, specifically cold shrinking and stretching, let's put it into play on this panel physically and show you how to address the panel. But before that, if you guys are learning something in this video, you won't wanna miss the future ones. Please like this video, hit the subscribe button and get notified on upcoming videos. We are also including Links in the description to help you find all the tools we talk about in each one of these videos. Some of the things you need to do and make sure of is that your panel is completely clean. So if you got undercoating on the backside, all of that's gotta come off if you're working in an area that is as damaged as this. The next thing, once you get it bare metal, we use the DICOM. This is the blue layout fluid that you're seeing on this panel and it is used to show where our highs and lows are. It's basically the replacement to our guide coat in our body working videos. What we've done here is we have taken a very low crown dolly and we're going to be working on trying to get you guys corrected in your mind because what everybody does, I'm guilty of it too, is that you would typically see this. What we did here is we took a block and we took 150 grit because I don't really like to score the metal up more than I have to and we just surfaced over this. This panel was given to us by Auto Metal Direct. They sponsor our classes and our tutorials. So we took that brand new panel, 
we've stripped it, we've made it rusty, we've damaged it, and then we did the blue layout fluid, and now this block with 150 grit has shown where our highs are and where our lows are. <clears throat> we also gave it a few Audi dents, which is what this is. It's super high and pushed out. And we just wanted to talk about what you would typically do, like I said, I was guilty of it, is you would take this dolly and you would place it on the backside in the center of the low and you would come over here and you would smack around these highs and try and compensate, right? You're trying to bring everything back down to level. But if, here's where you need to make sure you're assessing the panel, you need to know what happened. For this, we beat the hell out of it with a hammer. So if it has stretching that's happened versus just a, maybe you pushed it with your hand and it popped in, and then we talk about bumping. When you take a dolly from the backside and you come in, that is bumping. You're not using hammer on dolly. And when we get into hammer on dolly versus hammer off dolly, hammer on dolly is specifically hammer hitting the dolly in the very center point where you hear a very loud ting. You want that ting, which is what's going to stretch metal, if you are trying to stretch it back out with a low. And if you have it hammer off dolly, there's a big difference in the sound. So if you move around from the dolly, you're trying to find it. Hear the difference in the sound? That very loud ting noise makes you know that you are specifically hammer on dolly. Anything outside of that is hammer off of dolly. And at that point, if you're hammer off dolly, all you're really doing is you're creating a wave that you're just moving the metal back and forth. You're not shrinking a high and you're not stretching out a low to bring it up. That's the big takeaway that you're gonna get out of this video. If we are trying to, for example, take this here high and we are going to smack it down into itself, to reiterate, like we talked about before, we're going to pick a dolly that has a very low crown to this panel and we are going to put it directly behind the dent. And here, we are going to cold shrink that high down. If you're actually listening to this, you will hear that it sounds almost like a dull thud when I'm hitting it until that hammer has moved the metal down flat with the dolly. And as soon as you hear the loud ting, that's where you need to stop because at that point, you have shrunk it all the way down, and when you hear the loud ting, you are now stretching it. You're doing two different things. So understand when a panel needs to be shrunk down flat and what you're listening for versus when you're all the way down flat and you're hitting that dolly and you're hearing the loud ting, you're just overstretching the panel. If your panel is welded on the car and it has nowhere to move, let's picture that there is a tablecloth sheet over this panel, but it's pinned all the way around as if sheet metal was there. If you are to shrink it, picture grabbing it in the center of that sheet and pulling it all together in all directions. It's pulling the metal in. And if you have a panel that is stretched, then you have to figure out how you're gonna shrink that down. And we're gonna dive into that way more even on the next video, but for cold shrinking purposes, not shrinking discs and not heat shrinking with a torch, it's, it's too broad. You need to be precision in being able to take this out to a mirror. If you start wailing on this thing with your normal, typical flat hammer and flat dolly, you're gonna warp this panel more than you get. You've heard the term, or maybe you haven't, phantom waves. You ever go to a car show where you have excessive heat and the panel starts heating up? Well, if the panel is not relaxed and it's not in its natural state, the shape is not perfect, meaning there's all this damage there, the metal starts moving and doing different things. Everybody thinks that phantom waves come from body filler. It actually comes from perfect metalwork. If your metalwork is not perfect and it's not stretched and relaxed, and if you push it and it has give, that's where you're gonna get phantom waves where it might look good in the morning in the cool weather and later on in the heat, it's gonna start expanding and that's where even with your filler work on there, it's gonna move and have ripples in the surface. So again, have your dolly, use your block, 
continuously. So we have taken this spot and we have knocked it down. You're gonna go back and forth between your hammer and dolly work and your block. You can already see that it's hitting a little more and you wanna use your entire bare hand at this point to be able to fill the panel and address what needs to move. This is still high. So we are going to take our dolly back in here with firm pressure. Again, we wanna talk about finesse, right? So the harder you hit this thing, the more that metal displacement moves. So if you're close, right? You got a big crown, you're tapping that down, and once you get down, it's a lighter touch. The harder you hit, the more stretch, the least you hit, the littler that it shrinks down. So come in here. Now we've gotten that down pretty close, but we've also hit this panel this direction. We've hit the panel this direction. We have excessive lows that you can see. These are the highs, and now we have the low. And the biggest misconception that I will tell you here is that if the panel has been stretched in that spot, if you put your dolly, what you would typically do, and put it right in the center of this pushing outward, and you come in with this hammer and hit the high, that works for metal that is not stretched. This we weld on with a hammer, we know it's stretched, and we have to bring everything back down. We know this panel is sh shrunk back down and it has a low, so we're going to put pressure in the center and we're actually going to use our hammer that has a slight crown that we fixed with the belt sander and we're actually going to hit and push this dent up. We're not going to hit the high, we're going to be working on getting this crown. And the reason that it's important to match the crown to the panel is that what you're hitting when your hammer on dolly is you're creating that shape. So if you had a dolly that had a very high crown maybe you were using this guy, you will, if you do hammer on dolly right here with this dolly, it will create a big old bubble crown and you're overstretching it. That is why it's important to make sure that you match the dolly with the curvature of the panel as close as you can. So we're going to put firm pressure in the center of this dent pushing upward and we're going to find our dolly. There's our dolly, we can hear the high pitched we do not want to hear. You also want to lock your elbow and it's a wrist movement. You don't want to be wailing. You don't have anything accurate. You're all over the place. Lock your arm where it needs to be and use a steady wrist movement. You also don't want to be holding the hammer up here high you don't have the leverage that you need to move the hammer. So again, it's continually taking your block and checking it. You'll notice right here, it's already bringing this up. The craziest part that blew my mind when taking Ken's class, and that's why it's so good, is you spend years, literally 20 years for me, battling these issues, trying to get something perfect, and all I've been doing is hammer off dolly trying to move it. Well, the panel, because it's stretched, it would just go back and forth either direction. Here, we're actually able to push up. And I am slowly moving that dolly on the backside and massaging it. But check it out. Notice how this dent is starting to show up more and more. So what we're gonna do is we're going to move in the area that is low, move this dolly and we're gonna find it, we're gonna locate it. If you are lining up your hammer with the area that's already flat and high, you want to move. So right there, we, we found where our dolly is. You don't wanna move. You then want to reposition your dolly on the backside over just a tad. Line up the center with the low. Little bits at a time. 
It doesn't take but a couple strikes to actually move the metal in all reality. We're gonna come in. Now check it out. Now we're hitting over here. We're getting more and more of this surface up, flat, level, where we're not having to use excessive filler. If you were to take a straight edge, I actually have one right here. If you were to take a straight edge and lay it down, you can see all of your lows and all of your highs. And although that may only be about a sixteenth, we're trying to achieve a perfect finish in metal before body filler even starts. And that's what we're trying to teach. We're trying to teach quality work, not work where you're just, whether it be welding or whether you're just smacking a dent out or filling it, we're trying to get on a level for you guys to take your project to a whole nother level. So we're just gonna continue to bring this up. And then check it. Look how much more of that is showing up. It is showing up so much more. We have created a nice flat surface but remember, we're stretching the metal at this point. We're, we're taking the metal that was damaged and pushed in, and we're stretching it all back up level. And what you want to do, we need to show an example. We did a little cold shrink. But as you get this flatter and flatter, so if you have a, a high crown dent, you need to be shrinking it down, pushing the metal into itself, just to reiterate. And anything that is pushed in and stretched inward, you need to, if you can get to the backside with a hammer, it's nothing wrong with putting a dolly on this side and smacking that excessive stretched area up. But just know when you get close where you're dealing with a few thousandths of an inch, whether it be a 16th or whatever, you're, you're lightly bringing it up. Again, this gets you back to the ground level. The one thing I want to tell you guys is as you learn this, you're gonna overly stretch the panel. And that's why it's so good to take Ken's classes because he really dials you in on that. However, if you're the guy at home in your garage and you're just trying to pick this up, the next video we're gonna make is discussing how a shrinking disc works, uh, not heat shrinking. We do not wanna use a torch. Everything about this is very precisionly done. If you use a shrinking disc, you can pinpoint the most minute high and bring it down exactly perfect. So you guys are definitely gonna stay tuned and check out the video we're gonna do next on shrinking disc once we have an area that is completely worked to a point where we're just taking out very minute excessive stretches. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, share what you know, continue to learn. I'm Travis, we'll see you guys next week when we go over how a shrinking disc works on heat shrinking versus cold shrinking.